True Detective Night Country is an absolute trash heap dumpster fire of a detective show. The only mystery surrounding this hot, hot garbage is how on earth it ever got so much acclaim. It's slug-like pacing, Wattpad fanfiction script, flat note characters, cliched storytelling, repetitive dynamics, pitiful use of flashbacks and exposition dumping dialogue all contribute toward it committing the greatest sin a television show could ever commit. Aside from its inadvertently hilarious scenes of so-called drama and woefully tedious needle drops of songs that do nothing except take you out of the show, it's as dull as fucking ditch water. Duller than the sludgy ashes of the totally needless, mentally ill sister who realised the only way out of this trash was to control alt delete her own fat ass out of the show. To all those that wrote that this piece of shit excuse for a detective show was somehow good, or even had the temerity to say it was better than season one, I've only one piece of advice for you, really. If you get the opportunity, you should kill yourself. What? A clockwork orange better watch its back, let me tell you. There's a new kid in town, Sonny Jim. If you ever want to make somebody go completely fucking one flew over the cuckoo's nest, have them try to find the plot in Night Country and then show them all of the rave reviews and watch with relish as the last synapse of their sanity snaps like a goddamn twig. Stop it! Stop it! Please! I beg you! You better pray to God that this show doesn't make you go totally insane. <laughs> oh, come on. You kidding me? You talk to God. No. I listen. <laughs> I don't pray to God. God prays to me. And looky here. It's been renewed for another season already. Delightful. How? How? How on earth has this happened? Am I a prick? Don't answer. I feel like I'm living in some parallel, far woke twilight zone. I'm going insane. Where? How? How? How is this happening? It's like we're in a world now where everything that was once good is now seen as shit, and what's shit is held up and celebrated. What the? Time is a flat circle. Ah! Just look at the way he says the line too. It's disgusting. You can hear it, can't you? his soul escaping through his throat. That's the moment right there he realised he would slit his own mother's throat in her sleep just to get a bit part on a low-budget B-movie. That's just sad. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> The other completely unforgivable sin Night Country commits is having the sheer braggadocious audacity to not only mimic season one in many a scene, but even have the naive impression that it has one single right to even reference it or think about itself in the same breath. Remember Russ Cole drinking Lone Star? Yeah, I remember. Remember the spirals? Yeah, I remember. Season one didn't have nearly enough spirals. I couldn't get enough of them spirals. I wanted to see them spirals everywhere. Issa Lopez, yeah, season one was muy great and all, but really could have done with some more spiral berries. Remember time is a flat circle? Yeah, I remember. I remember when it was said totally out of context and made absolutely no fucking sense whatsoever. Remember when sex scenes were relevant to the characters' personal lives and drove the story forward instead of just being there to make the audience want to puke? Whoa. Yeah, I remember. Remember when Russ Cole got drunk before having dinner at Marty's place? Yeah, I remember. Because it marked the anniversary of his five-year-old daughter's death and the subsequent failure of his marriage. What a pussy. Man up, faggot. We all know a true detective gets hammered while doing some fine-ass detectoring work. 
of repeatedly watching the same fucking stupid piece of evidence over and over again until she gets all slushy-washy down below, drives drunk because it's okay for a cop to do it, apparently, then barge into her boss's house for some well-earned schlong. That's how you deal with your problems, you goddamn pussy. Yeah, I remember. Remember Wind River? Yeah, I remember Wind River. That movie was actually pretty well written, if I remember correctly. Not like this piece of sh**. Remember when all the women weren't old, fat, and ugly? Remember this YouTube? You can't go around saying shit like that. Remember the oranges? Uh, remember SpongeBob SquarePants? What? Remember Spice Girls? It's our song, baby girl. I wanna, I wanna. Nah, I don't want a member. Why would anyone in their right mind want a member Spice Girls? Remember when sisters called each other baby girl unironically? Remember when shows needle drop cover versions of crappy pop songs with lyrics that match what was happening on screen just in case you were too stupid to get it? Nah, but I think Issa Lopez members. She members good. She members so hard. Remember when she put a gazillion spirals in True Detective? Yeah, I remember. I remember tattoo spirals. Spirals on a Harry Potter philosopher's stone, Snapchat spirals, Junji Ito hang your head in shame. You call that a spiral? Faggot! Ito my ass, eat your heart out more like. You should be begging Issa Lopez to go over your amateur manga with her HBO red pen. Rumor has it that the only way she can come is by practicing her karma suitor on a twister mat with her clit trapped inside a Rubik's Cube. Bitch has got some major issues. More red flags than a Hitler ratty, let me tell you. Not as many as in a Wattpad fanfiction chat GPT script, mind you, because that would be nuts, but still. I don't want to remember nothing no more. Remember Ghostbusters? The town of Ennis could have really done with some Ghostbusters. Not these Ghostbusters, the true Ghostbusters, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I remember. Remember when there weren't so many Mexicans? Oh, I remember. Ooh, so many spirals, though. What could they all mean? Surely they must correlate to the story somehow. They couldn't have just been plastered in there like Bukaki on the hub just for the sake of it, right? <laughs>A bunch of scientists, all men, have gone AWOL and there's an indigenous woman's tongue found at the research centre. This connects with a case six years prior, which Danvers, racist white cop town bike, and Navarro, brutal diversity uppercut detective, both worked on and have, surprise surprise, fallen out over. For no fucking reason, mind you, but whatever. From there, each episode is just full of filler until the last five mins or so where a plot point is dropped about as subtly as the needles of its stupid verisimilitude murdering songs. Not only are they terrible, unearned and drama allergic plot points, but they also involve NPC characters that just pop up whenever the script conveniently needs them to. There's barely any detective work done at all. And most of the detecting work is done by young, dumb simp cop and Daddy Ross Cole's ghost. No joke here either. Not only does Travis Cole do most of the leg work, but he also leads the way to the bodies of the scientists at the end of episode one through interpretive dance. <laughs> yeah, you heard that right. The biggest plot point in the first episode is told by a ghost getting his boogie on. <laughs> There's also some shit about the water being bad because of the mines or fucking climate change, but that's just mentioned repeatedly, I might add, through woeful exposition fodder dialogue, only to come up again when the plot needs it to. It serves zero, zero purpose, and is only there, in the end, to give some vague explanation as to the equally meaningless and inconsequential supernatural tosh, which also pops up entirely needlessly. Remember when the script needed Navarro alone, so it threw some hillbillies into the hospital, the Danvers, a skinny woman of 60-odd, 
had to deal with by herself so we could hear a creepy voice for absolutely no reason whatsoever? Yeah, I remember. The biggest question is how in the fuck Night Country can not only reference season 1, but also shamelessly copy and paste from its script, whilst also somehow learning absolutely nothing from it. I would say you can make a great drinking game by taking a shot every time Night Country takes a huge dump on the closing line from episode 1, but that would make me an accessory to murder. Remember when Russ Cole said, And start asking the right fucking questions. Yeah, I remember. Jodie Foster remembers too. She remembers so hard she just can't stop saying the goddamn line. We're just not asking the right questions. Not asking the right questions. Ask me questions. Question me. No, ask again. Ask the question. Wrong question. Ask the real question, Briar. I don't want to do that. Ask me questions. No, I don't want to. You wanted to know. Ask me the fucking question. That's exactly the question. Keep asking. Ask the questions, Briar. You make up the questions. You just had to know. I had to keep digging. The question is, why is Hank? Don't fuck ask around. the question me, okay? What's the question? Paper Wrong bullet. question. Ask again. Some questions just don't have answers. We weren't asking the right question. All right, keep asking. The question isn't who killed Annie Kay, but who knows who killed her. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? You need to learn when to stop asking questions. Here's a thought. Maybe all of them should just stop asking questions already. Because clearly, all of these bitches are awful at it. Shut the fuck up. Just don't do anything In truth, everything you need to know about fraud detective shite country can be found in the deplorable opening credits. Not only do they use a Billy Eilish song, already done to absolute goddamn death, but it doesn't even bother to correlate much with what should have been the show's goddamn themes. While some of the slices and jagged takes work well with the music, all it really does is demonstrate the sheer nothing this show has to say. She's bullshit, it's all fucking nothing. Filled to the brim with cheap horror jump cuts and distorted trills and the like. Ironically enough though, as you crawl through the sludge of its script, episode after episode, the song often serves as the show's fucking highlight. It fills you with the potential that maybe, this week, we'll actually get to see some good old fashioned detectoring, only to give us shit like this. Fantasy football. Oh, Tinder. You're in Tinder? Yeah, I'm on Tinder. <laughs> Have you been working on your Hollywood smile? I will shoot your sick fucking mouth right off your face! Time is a flat circle. I wanna really, really, really wanna sing a zig. No! God, please, no! 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 The other clue is seeing based on True Detective. More like hijacked, brutally raped, and then trafficked to shamelessly bandwagon off the original season's success. Oh, bullshit. You're talking bullshit. Based my ass. Night Country should be embarrassed to even try and stand in season one's shadow. It's no wonder the whole show is playing hide and seek in the dark. If it woke up from a dream where it dared imagined itself even comparable to the original, Night Country should be groveling on its knees and begging for forgiveness. I sure hope Nick Pazzolato got one hell of a paycheck for selling his soul like this, because it's pure child trafficking. He should sue HBO for defamation and slander and pay himself out of his own pocket for massacring his baby like this. It's the worst case of infanticide I've ever come across. Look how they massacred my boy. Then you've got the characters. When it comes to the women, the only rule in Night Country is this. Just because you don't have a dick doesn't mean you can't be a complete and utter dick 24-7. And also get dick on tap, whether the so-called man in question wants it or not. There you go. Get it all out. We've got Danvers, the cantankerous chief of Ennis Police, a potty mouth, totally dislikable, and irredeemable hoe oh, who's banged every guy in town. Yeah. 
She's a triple home wrecker, a shit cook, and a sloppy drunk, whose detective skills in the first episode involve soggy mayonnaise and crumpled clothes left in a washing machine, all to ascertain that the scientist bros went missing 48 hours prior. But well, at least she knows her way around the kitchen. Not sure how, mind you, because she can barely understand basic English. They spent decades trying to sequence the DNA of an extinct microorganism that potentially could stop cellular decay. I mean, try it in English, nerd. Speak in a language we can understand, Mr. Scientist. Then you've got Navarro, woefully portrayed by the woodier than Toy Story Carrie Reese, who lost her last boxing match to a stapler by the looks of it, who just likes to smash. Whether it's socking NPC civilians, <laughs> truncheoning her own troops, <laughs> or forcing SpongeBob soy pants to splooge inside her, <laughs> my eye! Navarro gotta smash what she gotta smash. I guess having so much wood made her incapable of thinking about anything else. <laughs> now she do got a baby girl sister, or did, whose entire personality just equates to mentally ill. After losing her shit, Navarro sticks baby girl into a voluntary mental institute, but when it gives baby girl the ick, she just walks out, undetected, strips naked, and goes for a snow nap. This is meant to be moving, I think. But then, a couple of hours later, the Coast Guard finds her dead, somehow recognises her, and conveniently gives Navarro an off-screen phone call to tell her the good news. Yes, yeah, your sister alright? Never mind that it's pitch black and all I can see before me is 10,000 miles of ice and snow. Me and the boys recognise that ass anywhere. Then we've got Rose, a sort of magical negro type who comes to the rescue whenever the script commands her to. If you're bothered by me saying that, just Google it and we can move on. Okay? Thanks. Yes sir, boss. Rose, however, is more like a magical white hoe, which is the name I'm pitching for the updated trope. She provides counselling services, sees dead people, <laughs> arranges funerals, and knows a thing or two about getting rid of a corpse. If I were to guess, I'd say Issa Lopez identifies most with this bitch. I mean, with lines like this, who wouldn't? I was a very serious professor in a very serious school, writing very serious ideas. Every damn word I'd written in my entire life was meaningless. The irony being that her own character is just as meaningless as her own chat GPT script. Honestly, I really wish I was joking here. Let's see, who else? Uh, we've got Kayla, who just moans the whole time because her dumb, young, white boy husband has got to do some work for a change instead of pissing away his days playing Candy Crush. Because he's got to do some overtime, because, you know, there's a mass homicide investigation going on. This somehow makes him a total asshole. Asshole. You're an asshole. And finally, we've got Leia. Danvers' adopted Native American daughter. When she isn't virtue protesting, because the script needs her to, she loves nothing more than filming herself fiddling her underage girlfriend, Sherry. But when Sherry, the tiny teenage girl who really should have been called Lolita, let's be real, rightfully runs off when Leia gets her ass handed to her by the police, all Predator Leia's response is... Fuck Sherry. And the love is over. Aww. And when it comes to the men, all you need to know is they're either incredibly stupid or blatantly corrupt. Usually, it's both. But more importantly, they're all submissive to the point they might as well be walking around with a leash and electronic dog collar that gives them a good old zap anytime they dare even think of doing something masculine. We've got SpongeBob soy pants. SpongeBob is cool, he cleans your teeth. He lives in a pineapple. Who spends his entire time simping for strong woman Navarro, clearly a mystery nobody could ever solve, or crying over his stolen SpongeBob SquarePants toothbrush. A toothbrush Navarro steals just for the lols. She gives it back to him in the end though, making his entire subplot, boy loses toothbrush to bully who likes to ride him whenever she wants, 
Boy cries about it for a couple weeks. Boy gets toothbrush back but loses Bully who likes to fuck him whenever she wants. Uh, what are we meant to feel here? Sentimental about the time we had a toy toothbrush? And the Bully stopped molesting us after school? Ah, uh, there. We've got dumb daddy simp cop Hank, whose whole character arc involves waiting around for his Russian mail order bride, only for her to leave him in the lurch after taking all his money. That's it. His little side quest for higher quality puss serves absolutely nothing to the plot and is only there because... pathetic white man funny? After getting ghosted... Uh, ghosted. Get it? Yeah, I'm Hank sings a sad song about there being no god and then gets shot by his own son in arguably the most contrived comical scene in true t no, television history. Not only does he kill his own daddy, but Navarro and Danvers make him take care of the corpse in a time is of the essence trope when really time is of no essence whatsoever, but well, whatever the women say I guess. Before this, Hank is meant to stake out Danvers in another woefully bad setup, and does so by loitering around the office like some villain out of Scooby Doo looking as suspect as possible. There's even a section halfway through the show that reveals he covered up some evidence of the case six years before, and neither Navarro nor Danvers or his stupid son raise as much as an eyebrow as to his motive for doing so. It's just brushed aside because the script still has a few episodes to slog through and is pawned off as some quirky personality trait. Oh, that Hank. Always oh, fucking with the evidence and cooperating with the crooks and the thieves and the derelicts. That's our Hank, all right. It's a good thing he's on our side, let me tell ya. If he ain't doodling over evidence he stashed away at his own crib, he's in the kitchen whipping up shit sandwiches. Oh, I tell ya, if he had a brain, he'd be dangerous. Thing is, Night Country would have made an hilariously bad two-hour cop movie if they removed all the pointless garbage and ball-achingly dull subplots. It reminded me a bit of another trash detective film, Night Hunter, which is also guilty of spoon-feeding its exposition into the mouths of its presumably water-headed, retarded audience. It even featured Alexandria Daddario as well, who, because she's a good woman, tried to save the film by whipping her puppies out in frustration only for the director to say no, cause, uh... He's gay. Gay, 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 gay. Oh! Gay, 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 so gay. But at least Night Hunter was smart enough to know if it was going to be stupid, it better pick up the pace. Night Country, in comparison, is so tediously fucking slow, it's criminal. I want it held on trial and locked up for wasting everybody's time. Never mind slow burn, this is like Chinese water torture on screen. Eskimo torture, delivered at a snail's pace with funky looking polar bears and that freaky chick from the ring. The funniest thing though? This is a mystery that could have been wrapped up by the afternoon if Danvers bothered doing her job properly. Instead of sniffing expired mayo and checking the laundry, she could have just looked around the facility and, I don't know, found the super secret door that led into the cave where everything went down. Admittedly, the place is huge, and I guess they couldn't because lack of resources or whatever, but still, you'd think the scene of the crime would be a good place to start searching for clues, especially when there's fuck all else to go on. <laughs> Night Country is literally like an episode of South Park, only if they were to satirise this crap, it would snap the space-time continuum because they wouldn't need to change a goddamn word. In the end, again like something out of Scooby-Doo, 
It turns out that the girl boss cleaning ladies were the ones who committed the crime by holding the scientists up at gunpoint after discovering they killed Annie Kay in a deus machina girl powering moment of complete and utter retardation. And they get away with it too, because being strong, independent asshole women themselves, Danvers and Navarro just let them off the hook. Blame it on the boogeyman or polar bear or what the fuck ever. And when Navarro asks who dropped the tongue inside the lab, they all just shrug. So the beginning and the end of this stupid show was all an act of some spiritual mother god deus machina, which is never satisfyingly explained. Just like the mysterious DNA of the microorganism the scientists were searching for and found and did actually work to, you know, cure cancer or all life on this planet as we know it, bringing eternal life into the realm of possibility. But because it made the water dirty and got nuisance hippie girl boss protester killed, they had to cover it up, even though it worked, apparently. So, uh, what the fuck? If it works, why wouldn't it behoove mankind to, I don't know, continue with the research? I mean, this could be some groundbreaking, life-altering shit. Never before has this been uncovered, right? Don't you think they should continue with their research? Hello? Um, hello? Hello? You need to learn when to stop asking questions. Oh, right. Well, here's a spiral, I guess. Don't ask questions, just consume spiral, and then get excited for next spiral. Shame on me. I guess I'm just asking the wrong fucking questions. Some questions just don't have answers. In conclusion, M. She True Detective Night Country is what Madam Web is to the Marvel Universe, what Rings of Power is to Lord of the Rings. It's the Shemu 3 of television shows, and Shemu 3 has better fucking dialogue. Really? What's that supposed to mean? The world of True Detective didn't end with a bang, but a sorry wet queef. Hey guys, we have a little surprise for you. What? You know I'm right. I don't know shit. Well, then you're a shit detective. Yeah, well, whatever. Ray, I still need my toothbrush. Take care when watching Trash Detective that you don't become a trash detective. For when you gaze into the night country, the night country gazes also into you, so long as you don't fall asleep, which you will, over and over and over and over and over again. And again. And again. <laughs>